So, uh, you know, you go ahead, Tay. Now, nah, I was going to ask, because um, I know you were you were in the police force in Jacksonville. So what was hard? Was it harder, you know, doing that or wrestling? Your like your very first year of wrestling. Which one was harder? Your first year uh, on the force or the first year of wrestling? Probably, probably wrestling. Uh, actually, prob- no. I, I, I take that back. I take that back. Um, when I say wrestling, I mean it was probably easier wrestling than it was on the um, force because I was stuck in the jails in the beginning. I only started. I only crossed over towards the end, which is why I got in my college. And before we can get I was dual certified, but before you can get sworn in to have your actual own police car, you got to do ride-alongs. And more importantly, we had a sheriff at the time that made you uh, – uh, he upped the requirements, so you had to have a four-year degree. You know what I'm saying? We're talking Jacksonville, Florida, baby, the bold new city of the south. you got to have a degree down there to be on the good old boy system. Ain't that something? <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, so – Anyway, once the, uh, the director of the jails, he ran for sheriff, and he became the new sheriff uh, after the four-year term was up, and he, he dropped the requirements down to two years, and that's when a lot of people that were stuck in the jail, you know, because the jails are always, the turnover rate for the jails is just like WWE's been this year. It's as quick as you get a new one, they're already out the door. So that's how it is. So they, try to, they would try to keep everybody that was in the jail keep them there so that way they, you know, they don't have to pay a lot of overtime and, and it always stays uh, uh, fully staffed. But, man, yeah, it was hard. My last my last year, um, or the year before my last year, this guy gets off the elevator and he sees me and, and off of the inmate elevator, elevator, might I add, and he sees me and he goes into this Bruce, Bruce Leroy type thing and he comes charging me, you know, like he was Chuck Norris and, all of a sudden, I, you know, I, hey, I didn't have no time to, to grab no taser or mace or whatever, and I just, I, I became the Ayatollah, a.k.a. that's Pope's boxing persona, and I just knocked him out, you know? So it, it was pretty rough being down there. Oh, wow. And is, was uh, boxing a gimmick, or, or are you a legit amateur boxer? What do you mean it's boxing a gimmick? Anybody that knows me know that that's my legit background. You think they sat there on TV and said that over and over? If it wasn't legit? Oh, no, hey, hey, brother. Oh. Hey, let me, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I know you don't know it, and I know there's a lot of stuff that's fab, fabricated when it comes to wrestling on the storylines story and all that stuff. But you believe me, if Elijah's ba- boxing background was not legit, the moment I was on that television on SmackDown and they were – putting that over every week, trust me, it would have been all over the goddamn internet community. So, yeah, Elijah's boxing background is 100%. Now, Pope, you got a right to, you got a right to get on Darius. Darius calls himself Mr. Wikipedia. Which oh, means he, he's supposed to know it all. He should know that, Pope. He, he should know that. it. Absolutely. And I'm not big on Wikipedia anyways because they're so – that, I, I love it for for one reason. I, I love Wikipedia for one reason and one reason only when it comes to Black Pope Elijah Burke himself is that when you go on there, you never know what you're going to get. So when you're looking at your stuff on Wikipedia, just know that 50% it might be right, 50% it might be wrong, and 9 out of 10 is more wrong than it is right, and that's why I love it. Okay. Now, where I was going with that is, uh, why not go pro or uh, maybe in these days uh, the MMA route versus uh, pro wrestling? Well, because, number one, um, I did the boxing for three, a little over three years, uh, and it all started with the uh, guns and hoses, uh, firemen versus policemen. That's what got me into it. And I went down and I enrolled in the tough man stuff just so that I could get, get ready for the actual boxing event, and God dang, I, I got hooked. The rush, the adrenaline, the crowd, and I had always wanted to be a wrestler, so that was like my way of of, of uh, subsiding or uh, uh, quelching my my thirst, my need for for that entertaining aspect. Brother, I was the only one going out there to the ring for the guns and hoses. I would go out there in a full length Ric Flair type role. I even tried to get the dog on. WWE. I tried to get WWE. Hey, look, why not show this footage? Why not use them and say, you know, hey, look, let these people know that 
hey, this is Elijah. You know, I had a whole package put together and about three, four of my glamorous robes. So when I went out there as a policeman, decked down in robe, full, fully security, staffed and all that stuff, man, I had firemen and police wanting to fight me. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, yeah, so I went out there. I was only boxing for the entertaining, entertainment aspect only as it was. I didn't go, you know, my heart really, really wasn't in boxing, and, and, and I don't like to legitimately hurt people, you know. And so I, I, I rather do uh, wrestling because, you know, I, I've taken too many hits upside the head as it is. That's why I can't remember stuff. When I go out there, and work in the ring, I like to go out there and work. I don't. I, I can't go out there and go off of this whole script or whatnot. People go, oh, they play it. I just love it when I used to have some of these matches and they say a, a, a spot was uh, blown and this was messed up or they had that plan. No, it wasn't. Just went out there and did it. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, and, and, one, and one of the greatest examples, if you guys want to go and watch it, is the two out of three that I did with Punk in New Orleans. Our match was changed to a two out of three at the last second because I was supposed to be going against Marcus Corvon. Well, actually, no. Marcus Corvon was supposed to be going against Pump, and Elijah was supposed to be going against Dreamer. That was the day Marcus Corvon never came back to work. So they changed me and Pump to a two out of three false match. Do you really think, and, and, and you guys hear how stuff is changing at the last minute all the time, do you guys really think, a script was handed to us, and we had a whole two out of three match fall um, plan. No, man, we went out there and we worked, and and I love it because it it is it, it's, it's easier. It makes you it makes me look better because I can respond and react naturally. But I can't do that when I have when stuff is planned. You know, I, I think you know what happens when stuff is planned. You get kicked in the head by Shelton Benjamin in a three way dance with CM Punk, and your lights go out, and you don't have any idea what's going on. And, and and that's what happens when stuff is planned, brother. <laughs> okay, go harken hark back to your. Uh, all right, you were on ECW. You were you were the leader of the the new breed group. And before you came on, I I was mentioning. Wait a minute, brother. I am the leader of the new breed. Don't you ever forget that. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Semantics, my fault. Okay. You hear that, Kevin Thorne? I am the leader of the new breed. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, I was talking before you came on about... And that's another thing. Let me interrupt you for a second. We yeah. have so many missed opportunities, man. It's just crazy. I think everybody in their right mind know that the new breed thing ended well too soon. Far, far, far too soon. And how about that? Anybody remember when, when Kevin Thorne quit the new breed? Do anybody remember that? I yeah. don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kevin Thorne went out there and lost against CM Punk. Me, Matt Stryker, Marcus Corvon standing backstage. I'm voicing my displeasure at Kevin Thorne. Kevin Thorne steps in my face and tells me if I ever do something or get in his face again the way I did, he will, you know, kick my butt or whatever. And then he goes, as far as the new breed concerned, I'm done or I quit. And then three or four months later, it's me and Kevin Thorne against Steve Richards and CM Punk. Ain't that something? I, I remember because I was a huge fan of the new breed, and ECW at that time. I was all over that. I remember that. It was crazy. Was Cincinnati, Ohio. It's, it's, it's funny, too, because I remember talking to Rick Flair. I'm going, God dang, how do y'all remember all this stuff? You remember 30 years ago to the day exactly where you were, what was the name of the building, and all that stuff, and here I am talking about two years ago when me and CM, me, CM Punk, Kevin Thorne, and Steve Richards had a tag team match at the Cincinnati, Ohio arena. Ain't that something? I can't believe I remember it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what well, what I what I was gonna get at before was I think that we need we need to see, you know a, a black you know, not to be you know, I'm just gonna use the the term black, but a black stable because we're not we the last time we seen that was the nation of domination. And, and you I'm, know what, brother, you have seen the black stable. You've seen too much of it. How come it how, how I think that's so overdone till it's ridiculous. I I mean only because if there wasn't such conjoining of blacks together, every you know, God dang, this is an athletic guy. God dang, this is an athletic guy. You know, without just saying, you know, these black guys, but okay, we'll put them against each other. You know, uh, yep. Shelton Benjamin versus Dog on the freaking Kofi. Elijah versus Shelton, or Elijah, or Elijah has to breathe Shelton over to ECW, or Elijah and Marcus Corvon, or 
recently, Crime Time Around the Truth 